It's the Rink Live podcast. I'm Jess Myers along with Mick Hatton. A nice summer day, but hey, we're never too far from the rink, right? We always want to talk hockey. And uh, Mick, uh, how things going? Any any hockey going on in your world? Lots going on in St. Cloud. I know the the uh, uh, 15s and and you know some some kind of all star teams being selected up your way. Well, it's a big week uh, for my oldest son, uh, who is going to be a sophomore in high school. His uh, his high school team has got a t- there a, a tournament here on on Friday uh, in Forest Lake, so it'll be kind of his first time playing uh, with with the high school team. So that's uh, that's big excitement. We'll see how that goes. Uh, he's undoubtedly going to be on the JV, and uh, but looking forward to kind of seeing how how that all comes together. As I've told you, the great moment in any hockey parent's life is that first time they're uh, playing high school and you drop them off at the school and they get on a bus and you don't have to drive them to a road game. That's the greatest thing ever. So. Yeah, yeah, but you still have to go. I mean, <laughs> well, you don't have to, but, you know, you're you're a good dad. You'll go there. The uh, the breaking news today, by the way, and, and this was not unexpected. I covered it uh, 10 days ago or so in my kind of look at the Gopher men's roster, but Owen Bartiskevich is officially a member of the Youngstown Phantoms for next season. They uh, they win the Clark Cup in the USHL, and then they add a goalie who has won the last two Big Ten titles. So not a bad deal for uh, them all the way around. And Owen will get some more playing time, which I know he he was looking for. So uh, the, the Gopher goalie roster is pretty much set on the men's side for next year. Speaking of Gophers and uh, people who play defense in, in, in college, we are happy to be joined by a, a pretty renowned Gopher in her own right. Patty Marshall is uh, with us today. Patty, how are things going? How's your summer been? Good, you know, getting some time away from the rink a little bit, but just started joining up some summer leagues. But yeah, it's been relaxing. I don't know why today, but like an hour ago, the Toronto Six uh, tweeted out video of that game-winning goal from the from the Isabel Cup uh, championship game in overtime, and and it's like you want to just rub it in. You want you want to have fun. Okay, you know, we'll be ready for next season, right? Yeah, I swear, every single time I go on Twitter, I see that video <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> Well, let's talk. You know, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, you, you just signed a, a, a you know contract to to return to the Whitecaps. Uh, how w- was it a difficult decision? Not a difficult decision. Uh, you know, how, how did that kind of all come about? Oh yeah, it was an easy decision for me. I'm actually uh, in dental school at the University of Minnesota, so it works out great that I'm still able to play hockey and uh, go to school. Hmm. There's, there's got to be a joke about hockey players and missing teeth in there somewhere. But just tell us about, you know, what what a, an average day is like for you, because I know dental school is not an easy road to to, to go to get a degree. You know, what? how do you balance, I guess, the, the hockey and the, and the classroom? Yeah, so right now I'm in class from about eight to four every day. And luckily we practiced at nighttime for the Whitecaps last year. Um, so busy days, long, busy days. But um the coaching staff is really great. They'll actually move some practices to fit my schedule. We have another girl or two also in class. So that was really nice. And my professors at school think it's awesome that I'm still able to play hockey. So they'll uh, let me move some things around in my schedule and make things work. I did a piece last year actually about Abigail Vereen, you know, who's going to be a, a teammate of yours with the Whitecaps next year. Last year with the Gophers, she's in pharmacy school and kind of the same thing, balancing, you know, all the classroom time. And you get actually get a break by going to the rink and going to practice now and then. So uh, a lot of people uh, kind of going down that road like you. Yeah, it's funny because uh, she's actually in the same building as I am. So I'll run into her at school sometimes. <laughs> I was going to ask you, you know, just looking back, uh, you know, when you were on the roster at the University of Minnesota, they also listed you as a psychology major. Did you change majors then, or how how did that work? Uh, you know, dur- during the course of your your academic career. Yeah, I was actually a psychology major and a biology and neuroscience minor. <laughs> so there's just a lot of overlap going on, a lot of classes, but it was good. <laughs> What, what, made you, what made you decide to go into dental into dental school eventually then? This is actually really silly, but it was, <laughs> gosh, I think I was like my first year in high school. We were actually at the rink for practice and one of my teammates' mouth guards fell out on the ice <laughs> and someone like picked it up and was asking who's it belonged to. And I looked at it and like within a second, I knew exactly who it belonged to based off of the mold, like of the teeth. <laughs> Then I realized how much of a weirdo I was and I could recognize everyone's teeth on my team just by looking like at their mouth guard. 
That's fantastic. Yeah. You know, uh, it, speaking of, you know, Gophers and, and dental school, great story from Gopher hockey history. Lou Nanny, when he came to the U of M, his parents told him, you're going to be a dentist. Everybody in the family will want to be dentist. He came to the University of Minnesota specifically because they had a dental school. He had been offered by North Dakota and a few other places, but they didn't have dental schools. So he came to the U of M because he was going to be a dentist. He said he lasted about six months. The first time he uh, had had to dissect something, he said, that's enough for me. I'm out. And, you know, he's obviously made a, a great career in hockey and a, as a salesman. So there is a kind of kind of a legendary history of, of gopher hockey and dentistry going together. That's too funny. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's go back to the beginning for you. I mean, you you started out, you know, in the North Country in the two one eight Thief River Falls. You know, if anybody, if you haven't been to TRF and seen the arena there, everybody knows about Ralph Finkelstead Arena in Grand Forks. Maybe you don't know the backstory. Ralph Finkelstead was from Thief River Falls originally. And as a give back to his community, he built an arena there that is one of the more amazing places to play hockey anywhere. I'm guessing as a kid growing up uh, in Thief River Falls, wasn't too hard to find your way to the hockey arena. No, and I, um, my family moved to Thief River Falls when I was about seven or eight, and I hadn't played hockey. My sister had just tried it out previously the year before, but when we got to town, everyone in the entire town played hockey. And I don't think I realized how spoiled I was at first. I showed up and there was this massive rink, but I didn't, I think, realize how that's probably the best high school rink in the entire country, strictly for being a high school team. So um, it was awesome growing up in that little town there. Uh, you, you end up, you know, playing at Deep River Falls High School for, for a couple of years. Were you in seventh and eighth grade? How, or, you know, what, what, yep. what were your first two years like there? Yep, yep, seventh and eighth grade, and my sister's actually just a grade above me, so it always worked out so well that they would pull me up for a year, and I would play on the same team as her, so less traveling for my parents. A lot of hockey background in your family, or were you, were you and your sister kind of pioneers in the sport? Yep, no, we, uh, our parents were trying to get us to join every sport possible, and my sister's crazy, so she chose goalie, so I always had someone to shoot on when we go to open skates. Oh, that's great. And, and how did you how did you come to play defense? Uh, honestly, I don't think anyone really wanted to play. I had a coach who was just like, all right, you can skate backwards. Like, you're going to stick with it. And it kind of just stuck ever since. <laughs> you, you played two years at, at Thief River Falls. Talk about uh, how did you end up going to Shattuck St. Mary's after that? Uh, you know, what, what all kind of went into the decision and, and how, how did that kind of come about? Yeah, so I actually grew up playing with this um, girl, Michaela Lange. She went to Bemidji State, but um, her mom was the trainer for the women's team at North Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to, you know, hang around the rink at North Dakota. I went to a lot of their women's games and the Lamaru twins. Uh, we did a lot of power skating with them. Um, so they kind of got us down there to go to a camp or two. And uh, they asked me to attend. And honestly, I didn't really want to at first, you know, no one leaves home like in Northern Minnesota, mm -hmm. but um, I'm really glad I did. Those are like the best four years of my life. I had a great time there. If you look at your bio from the four years you spent at Shattuck, you were national runner up one year. That was the bad year that you had there. Three <laughs> national championships out of four years there. I mean, that had to be just an incredible time on the ice and off the ice. Tell us about it a little bit. Yeah, no, it was it was awesome. I think my graduating class on the team, there was 12 of us. And I think 11 of us went D1 and the 12th girl went D3. Like just even being at practices, like we're just, it was so competitive all the time. Um, it's really exciting being around so many like-minded other young females that, you know, all have the same dreams to go on to play college or for the national team. So those four years were so awesome there. Describe you know I I actually went down I I had not I'd never been on the campus before uh, and I got a friend that that lives down in Northfield and he took me over to Shattuck St Mary's uh, just describe for people who haven't been there uh, you know what the campus is like and and what the facilities are like down there. Yeah, I always said it kind of looked like a little Hogwarts when you're like driving through from Harry Potter's. We have like our little arch that everyone knows and our clock tower. Um, there was a couple of ranks there, but honestly, I went to go visit, oh gosh, like a year or two ago, and they've added on so much. I didn't even recognize the school. Like now it's kind of set up like a little college. Mm -hmm. um, like you only go to schools on Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
The other days, are they call them blended, so you can go in on your own for one-on-one -on -one time with teachers. It's to get you ready for college experience. Um, the rinks are kind of open whenever you want. There's skills coaches everywhere that are willing to help you out. Um, they just got a brand new weight room, like state-of-the-art equipment. Yeah, it's a really special place to go. You you, you mentioned 11 of your teammates winding up playing Division One hockey at some point. Um, tell us, a, there's got to be a good story there of, of somebody that you played with that you went on to maybe play against in college or, you know, a, a fun rivalry you had. Who were, who were, who were some of those people in, in your class? <laughs> yeah, you know, I was lucky. I had Alex Woken. She came to the U with me, so I didn't have to skate against her. But yeah, we had a couple of girls go to Wisconsin, which is always not the most fun. They'll rub it in that they won over <laughs> us a couple of times, but that's awesome. Um, and a lot of girls decided to go out east because that's where they were originally from. Sure. So I didn't get to run into them as much as I would like, but. I think every single team I played against, I had previously played with someone. Alex, I, I talked to Alex or traded emails with Alex last uh, spring. I was doing a Fargo-Moorhead travel guide for the Gophers Regional there. And uh, I believe she's in like veterinary school or something yeah. like that too. Yeah. Yeah, she uh, she played my first year at the Whitecaps with us and they would fly her in for games, which is super cool. <laughs> um, yeah, but they decided they weren't going to do that anymore this year. <laughs> Uh, you played, you ended up playing on on the under eighteen team uh, th three years in a row. Uh, that that first year that 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 you ended up playing, were you expecting to to make the team at that point, or was that kind of a a happy surprise that you you ended up making the the, the team in your first year? Or? Oh, that was a happy surprise. Mm -hmm. I uh, yeah, honestly, when I went to camp, I wasn't even thinking about the U eighteen team because they never brought it up once because. Out of my age group, there's only two of us that got asked to make like the final tryout. And so it never honestly crossed my mind until I got there and there's like, oh gosh, I think like 30 girls or so. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to have fun. I'm like a young kid here. I'm just going to try and soak it all in. And then when I got the call that I actually made it, it was really exciting. And going overseas, playing hockey, I mean, I couldn't have asked for anything more. You're a Minnesota kid, obviously, you know, I'm sure there was a recruiting process and you had some options out there. What went into your decision to become a gopher? Uh, I mean, just, just their history alone in their program. I mean, you can see all of their awards, their championships after talking with the coaching staff and some of the girls that had been there, just the, the culture that they have at the rank off the ice in the locker room. But yeah, growing up and, Growing up, I was a North Dakota fan. After going to Shattuck, I um, I started to switch my view a little bit, and I, I kind of turned into a full-blown Gopher fan, and I was really excited when uh, Coach Frost had reached out to me about potentially playing there. How, how, how old were you when that when that whole recruiting process started? Because obviously there's been some changes now in the recruiting rules and stuff, but for you, I guess, how old were you when that, that whole started? Yeah, it was pretty early for us. I was freshman year in high school, and I believe it was both me and Alex Woken. We committed together, and gosh, that was like the very, very start of our sophomore year, like right when we got to school. Alex being from Fargo, too, she said there was always kind of a natural expectation that she'd head up I-29 and, and, and play for yep. the uh, the Fighting Hawks as well. So that, was, that had to be a big shock when both of you wound up wearing maroon and gold, huh? Well, her dad is the AD at NDSU. So he was a he was cheering for the Gophers for her too. <laughs> it's funny how that works out. Tell us about you as a player a little bit. You know, you were obviously a a high point producer at some points in your career. Uh, as a professional player, you know, it, it you it hasn't been as much about the points, but obviously being a, a two time league all star, the you've gotten some notice for the things you do on the back end. Just just tell us about your hockey game a little bit. Yeah, I think uh, growing up, I always just considered myself a defensive D. And I, I didn't realize how much I had actually joined the offense or like jumped up in the offense um, until I got to Shattuck um, and my coach kind of like sat me down and was like, okay, like these colleges are like starting to look at you. And I, I didn't realize it because I'm not a flashy player. Like you're never going to notice me for making big moves out on the ice, but I think I'm very consistent. I'm very poised. Um, I take pride in the D zone. I do the little things that people who come to watch a hockey game don't notice 
if that makes sense. It's it's sure. all the little things. It's the first pass out of the D zone that I think I do a great job of. It's having great stick positioning. Um, but yeah, I'm not a, a flashy player that brings in the fans to the rink. <laughs> Uh, you you spent four years at at the University of Minnesota. Uh, obviously, you have lots of great memories. Are there a few that stick out? I guess from from your time playing for the Gophers. Um. Yeah. I mean, winning WCHA championship, super fun. Um, regular season. Um, those were all great. But honestly, just spending time with the girls. I have a couple of really close friends still from the U that I talk to every single day. Um, there is one memory that always sticks in my mind is there is a senior on our team. She was, I believe, a grade older than me and, um, the nicest person you will ever meet in your entire life. And she got her first, uh, career goal, her senior year down at Mankato and the bench just erupted. And I, I remember thinking, I was like, this, this is like why I chose to go here. Like everyone was so excited for her. You were a uh, your, your your final year of college hockey was the nineteen twenty season, and you know that'll be remembered for some good reasons, and obviously a bad reason the way it ended. Just you know, I remember talking to Alex Woken maybe February of that year and thinking, "Wow, there's only a month of your season left for the most part, and then then you'll be done with college hockey." Well, none of us had any idea how abruptly and harshly things would end that year. Just as a senior on a on a team with some promise, that had to be a, a pretty tough moment. Tell us about it. Yeah, that. <laughs> That was tough sitting in the locker room that day and getting the news. And honestly, I think Alex Woken took it the hardest. We'll still bring it up this day. And we're like, we're the class, you know, that got screwed over. Like <laughs> there was only what eight remaining teams. We had just made the NCAA tournament. And out of our four years, you know, that was our greatest chance at winning. And uh, so that part really sucks. But um I think after our, we missed out on like our spring, like senior spring, like just being on campus, like, you know, our uh, career was over at Minnesota, just being able to hang out with the girls. I think that part was worse missing out on, but we had a great year that year and we had lots of fun. So it's fun to look back on it and talk about all the great things that happened that season too. Uh, after after that season, uh, you, you end up playing a, a year in Sweden. And uh, what what kind of all went into your decision to to go and play over there? And and, and what was it like just playing playing professionally over there? Yeah, I was taking a gap year between school, and I was like, I want to go have fun. I knew some girls that had went over, and honestly, when I was going over, I was like, um, kind of thinking more. So I'm going to go travel. Like it's going to be so much fun. Um, I heard some of the leagues weren't maybe as good as over here playing college. What I didn't know is that I entered the best league over in Europe, the <laughs> Swedish league, great hockey. A lot of those girls had played D one. And so I was like, okay, maybe not as much traveling as I, <laughs> I thought the hockey was actually great. And my team, uh, we came in second. I have a lot of seconds in my career after <laughs> leaving Shattuck. Um, the hockey was great. Uh, it's more skills based over there. Um, here it's way faster and just kind of North and South up the rank over there. It's so like more individualized, more creative play. Um, it almost kind of feels like a different sport, mm -hmm. but I feel like I learned so much. Like the game just was so, it was slowed down. We were playing on Olympic size. I feel like I could see the ice better because I had that extra second to make my decision. So I think by going over there, I actually learned, um, to be more more poised even with the puck and take that extra second because I have more time than I think. I've always thought that playing on an Olympic size ice sheet would be the toughest for the defenseman because you've got 15 more feet of blue line to to cover. But uh, that's <laughs> interesting that you say that, that that it was kind of conducive to your game. Yeah, it was. I <laughs> it was. It, it, granted, it's different for like shooting angles, like forwards. I get sucked out way wider on the bigger sheet. But I think like breaking it out and like even if I got the puck on the offensive blue line, I had that extra second. The forwards had to like skate that extra couple yards to get out to me. So I thought it was really nice. Well, and I've got to ask too, if you played uh, women's hockey in Sweden, if it's anything like European pro hockey, just generally, do you still have your Jersey? And have you ever counted how many advertisements there are on it? Because it, it seems like those players are walking billboards over there. 
No, I was so mad because I was so pumped about the ads. I was like, it's so <laughs> European. I want to be so cool in my new uniform. We get there and we like sit through this like hour or two meeting about how we're such a special team in Europe because we paired with the company. So we don't have ads on our jerseys. No. So everyone in <laughs> Europe thought it was cool that we didn't have ads, but I came over there for the ads. <laughs> All the teams that I was playing against had like McDonald's, like everything was plastered across their helmets, their breezers, and I had nothing. Uh-huh. What's, how, uh, you know, it sounds like you had a really good experience over there. What, how, how did you end up, uh, you know, deciding to come back and, and, and to play in, in, in Minnesota again then? Yeah, I guess it was all honestly based off of school. Um, and I was lucky enough to get into the University of Minnesota Dental School. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a homebody. My parents live an hour away. So it was just a no brainer mm-hmm. choice for me. And honestly, my first year of Whitecaps, I was just like, oh, you know what? I can do it. We practice like twice a week. It's like an hour. Um, it was nothing too straining, nothing too serious. And I was like, yes, mm-hmm. like totally doable with dental school. But then everything is just going in the right direction right now with women's hockey, like the salary cap going up, the conditions, we're getting more attention and awareness. Everything really started picking up. So this past season, um, we had lift two or three times a week. We had practice, you know, four or five times a week. So it's really all starting to pick up super fast, which is great for the sport. USA Hockey has dealt with some situations where some of the more prominent female players in the country have said, hey, we demand, you know, someone something closer to equal pay, equal attention, all of that. How is that manifesting itself in women's pro hockey? Are you seeing some of that push as well to say, hey, you know, uh, we're some pretty skilled athletes too, pay, pay a little bit more of attention to us? Yeah, right now with the two different leagues, um, I think it can kind of be confusing for watchers and people who are trying to support our game. Um, but anything that's happening is... Is, is in the right direction for both of our leagues. And yeah, I definitely can tell um, we're getting a greater audience just by having um, our deals with um, ESPN, having our games on TV, which is great. Cause I'll even have some of my classmates say they were looking through um, the sports channels last night or over the weekend and they ran into my game and they had no idea it was being broadcasted on TV, which is just awesome to hear. <laughs> Uh, you know, with with all your background and with, with you know playing on the inner eighteen team, uh, do, do you still do you still think about I guess sometimes maybe you know playing for the national team or with all your dental school and everything else kind of going on? Is that is that kind of on the <laughs> way on the back burner these days? Yeah, I think definitely now uh, dental school is my main priority. I mean, Whitecaps too. I never want to grow up. I want to keep playing hockey as long as I can. And it just happens to work out so good that I can do both at the same time right now. Um, I'm very lucky as the rink is only about 10 minutes from my apartment and I live right on school. So everything has just aligned so well for me. Um, yeah, I have no complaints. (laughs) The news lately out of Whitecaps camp is people like uh, Abigail Barine signing and, you know, a, a, a pretty good gopher flair on that team, though. I, I've got to ask, how does somebody like Liz Shepherds fit in when she was the hated enemy just not too long ago playing for Ohio State, even though she is a Twin Cities kid? <laughs> yeah, we make jokes about it all the time. And um, we have like a crew of Duluth girls. Um, they way outnumbered the Gophers or the Buckeyes on the team last year. Sydney Sin- like, Broat just resigned too, another yeah, former Bulldog. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, we had, I think we had like five or six Bulldogs on the team last year. Um, we had a couple <laughs> Wisconsin girls, Ohio with Liz. But now that these couple of Gopher girls have signed, we might outnumber some of them now. But it's funny because everyone has their phones pulled up especially during playoffs for the wcha final face off we're watching it on the bus and you know it, it's fun it's good banter between everyone i, I was gonna say do, do you still it sounds like you still follow it pretty closely then huh yeah all of us are still following which is which is really exciting and I mean, I will still have played with some of the girls at the u but this will be i think the last season that i'll know most of the girls so your team uh, plays its games at Richfield Ice Arena, which for my money is one of my favorite rinks in the Twin Cities. I love the fact that you can sit on all four sides. It's just one of those kind of unique, kind of low ceiling places where it gets loud in there. What's, uh, you know, for people who haven't been over there, what's a Whitecaps game like? Oh, it's awesome. I love the Richfield Arena. 
Um, like you said, it's kind of like that old barn style feeling in there. Um, I think it's a great spot to be. It's a great location and we get some pretty decent crowds. And um, yeah, at Tria, the stands were only on the one side, right. but now with it being surrounded, it gets really loud in there. And I think they have a great atmosphere during the games. With, with uh, you, you playing us, uh, obviously uh, so much closer to home. Uh, do, do you have a number of you know? Does your family come and watch you play quite a bit then, or and a lot, yeah. lot of friends kind of come and stop by? Or yeah, absolutely. I uh, my family, my parents, they're at all my games. My sister is just an avid hockey fan. She's at every single rink possible at all times. And then I even have classmates asking if I can get them free tickets to the games. So <laughs> it's it's uh, pretty fun. Two years in the league and two times you've been named an all-star. I mean, what what does that mean to you when you see some of the uh, the defenders in the Premier Hockey Federation and and you know obviously the experience they've had, not only college Olympics, all that to be to be named among that group must be a big honor. Yeah, it's it's really exciting. Um, it is an honor to be named and be able to go play with them, and it's it's super fun to catch up with them during that entire weekend, just check in with them and how they're doing, but. Honestly, I, I give a lot of credit to my team and my coaches that I had over the past couple of years. They got me to where I need to be. And um, yeah, it, it we always have a great weekend there. We've been in what Toronto and New York, and they both have been phenomenal weekends. They put on such a great showcase for the couple of days that we're there. And it's a lot of fun. I, I, I coach youth hockey and I try to uh, explain to the, the, the kids that I, that I coach that, you know, when when players are, are playing, even at the professional level, they're always working on something and they're always trying to improve on something. You know, for for you, are are, are there you know, is there a thing or two, I guess, here in the off season that you're working on? Uh, obviously, you're still go, got a lot of school going on. But I mean, are there things that you're working on, I guess, to improve yourself as a player here in this off season? Yeah, I think just getting more explosive. You can never um be good enough at that but I I feel like it's kind of going all back to the basics of it I mean now that I'm getting older I'm making sure I'm always you know doing my mobility my stretching because I can tell if I don't cool down now after a workout interesting okay so for folks who are going to check out the Whitecaps for the first time this year, you know, you've got a you got a team to cheer for the the blue jerseys all that you know that, that kind of fits with Minnesota you got to have an enemy too, though, don't you? I mean, so so for fans who want to get into to professional women's hockey this this coming winter, who, who who are you supposed to hate? You know, do you do, do you do you kind of cringe when the buttes come to town, or is it the pride? Or obviously, you know, you had the the championship game against Toronto last year. You know, who who's kind of the 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 team that you like to beat the most? Gosh, um, I think you kind of named two of them. The buttes have the same ownership group as us, okay. so it's always so fun beating them. Um, <laughs> They've been in Buffalo for people who don't know the Buffalo yep. buttes, and then yeah, the Boston become... Pride I mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Yep, uh, Boston Pride too. I think there was a lot of history going back and forth between those two teams, kind of being like the top two teams in the league even before I got there. Yep. Uh, but yeah, they are an extremely talented team, so it's always fun playing them. Yep. And obviously Toronto plays in Canada. And, you know, I, yep. I always say my complaint about Canadians when it comes to hockey is they act like they invented the game. Well, of course they <laughs> actually did, but that's okay. But is does that kind of add something to the rivalry that it's, you know, that is Canada versus the U.S. as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. And honestly, they they are our closest team to play all the way in Toronto. Um, but yeah, I think getting on the ice, especially after losing to them in overtime in the championship last year, uh, that'll be a good game. You, do, do you ever have any off time? I mean, with going to school and, and playing professionally, I mean, that that's an awful lot on your plate. Uh, you know, do, do you, what do you do to relax or do you get an opportunity to relax at all? Yeah, honestly, um, after sitting in class all day, <laughs> I, my, I'm mentally tired, but I'm not physically tired. So I love like coming out to my parents' house. I love yard work and getting outside. That's, that's my form of relaxing. <laughs> That's fun. Well, we're talking to Patty Marshall, a defender for the Minnesota Whitecaps, two-time uh, professional hockey all-star, former gopher who has just re-signed for two years. You know, just uh, it must be pretty exciting to think uh, you know where you're going to play the next two years. And, and you know, what are the goals, obviously, I guess, for for, for the next two years of your uh, of your time with the Whitecaps? Oh, to win a championship. I sure. want to bring it home. They haven't done it in a while, and I think we can do it. With the girls that we have signed, I definitely think uh, we have the players on the ice 
we haven't named our coach yet. So that will be like, I think the last big key piece, but I want to bring home a championship. I'm tired of getting second because I have a lot of those the last couple of years. Well, I was going to ask that. I mean, in signing a two-year contract before the coach is named, was that kind of a leap of faith, not knowing, you know, kind of what style a new coach will bring in? And, and uh, you know, how do you kind of look forward to that part of it? Yeah, it's definitely a little nerve-wracking because, you know, th- that's going to be like the core leader of our group. But we have such good players in the locker room. Um that I think we're going to be heading in the right direction no matter what, but yeah, I'm excited. I think the coach will hopefully be named in the next couple of weeks here. Well, it's uh, it's June. It's sunny. It's about 90 degrees. And all I can think about is getting out to the hockey rink. So that's, uh, that's probably a good thing. (laughs) Patty Patty Marshall, defender for the Minnesota Whitecaps. We really appreciate you joining us today. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. That's Mick Hatton. I'm Jess Myers. This is the rink live podcast. You can catch all of our content on the rink and we will see you at the rink.